If you are just getting started with Home Assistant, you may have heard a lot of people talking about something called add-ons, which do pretty much exactly what you would think. They extend the core functionality of Home Assistant by allowing you to install applications that aren't normally included out of the box. But with lots of add-ons available to choose from, is there any that are essential or must-haves? I think there are, so in this video I'll give you four add-ons that I think are must-haves and essential. And we may even sprinkle in some nice-to-haves and some of my favourite add-ons at the very end. If you're just getting started with Home Assistant, then you can find a list of all of the available add-ons inside of the add-on store, which is available through Supervisor. And the add-on store is basically like the app store for Home Assistant add-ons, and inside here you will find a list of all of the add-ons from official made add-ons from Home Assistant themselves to community made add-ons. And pretty much all of these allow for one-click installation of all of these add-ons. Some of them may require a little bit of configuration, but many of them are good to go right out of the box. Add-on number one is the SSH and terminal add-on, which in my opinion is one of the first things you need to get up and running as soon as you install Home Assistant. Having the ability to remotely log in from another computer to the OS running Home Assistant even when Home Assistant isn't running is an incredibly simple but powerful feature. Because as a beginner, it's quite possible that you will make a mistake that renders your Home Assistant offline. And so being able to remotely log in to troubleshoot and fix that problem is essential. Not only that, but short of plugging in a keyboard and monitor, SSH can sometimes be the only way to achieve certain things. So having SSH enabled should definitely be a priority. This also adds a terminal add-on to your menu, giving you instant terminal access right from the Home Assistant UI. Nice. Now that you have a way to access your Home Assistant if things go south, the next thing you're going to need is some sort of file editor. And so number two is going to be Visual Studio Code. Now, why would you need a file editor? Isn't everything controlled through the UI? Well, Kind of. Mostly everything is available to configure in the UI these days, which is great, but some integrations haven't yet been ported over to be managed through the UI, although more and more are being added every single month. So you'll need to use configuration files to add certain integrations, plus having a file editor is never a bad idea. I personally recommend Visual Studio Code here because it's the most feature-rich, it understands YAML formatting, and it has autocomplete for a lot of Home Assistant code, but if Visual Studio Code isn't compatible with your system, then File Editor is a good alternative which allows you to achieve the same end goal of editing files, just without the extra goodies that Visual Studio Code has. Add-on number three is going to be the Samba Share add-on. Why would you need the Samba Share add-on and what does the Samba Share do? Well, picture a scenario where a Home Assistant update has become available, and in your excitement to update, you forgot to read the breaking changes, resulting in something being incompatible in your config, and your Home Assistant doesn't come back up. What do you do? Sure, you could use the SSH add-on to edit the config, but it's been a while and your Linux skills are just a little bit rusty. That's where the Samba Share add-on comes in. It allows you to access the configuration files from your Windows computer, where you can use an editor of your choice to get things back up and running. Not only that, but it's great for if you want to upload or download files from Home Assistant, such as media files for playing on speakers, for example. The fourth and final add-on I think is essential is one that you've all heard me talk lots about, and that is the Google Drive Backup add-on. As we know, backups are really important for getting us out of trouble, should we ever find ourselves in hot water. But they aren't always the most fun thing to do, and also they aren't something that lots of us actually remember to do on a regular basis. That's where the Google Drive Backup add-on comes in. It allows us to completely automate the entire 
entire procedure of doing backups so that we don't ever need to actually think about it. It takes all the hassle out of doing backups and it's hopefully something that you never actually really need to use, but that one time where you do actually need to use it, you'll be very glad it exists. So those are my essential add-ons for our Home Assistant, but I wanted to very quickly give out some honourable mentions to some others that might interest you. Firstly, one of my favourite add-ons is called Frigate. Frigate is an NVR solution for your security cameras that has the ability to nicely integrate with Home Assistant and has built-in object and person detection, allowing you to do some really cool automations. Again, I've done an entire video on that whole entire subject if you are interested, which you can check out up here. Next up would be Node-RED, which allows you to create Home Assistant automations in more of a visual flow style format than the traditional Home Assistant automations does. Node-RED isn't something I personally use anymore and I don't think it's essential for most people, but if you prefer that sort of style of learning and you find it easier to follow, then you can definitely check out the Node-RED add-on. Rob from The Hookup has a very good beginner's guide for getting started with Node-RED which you should definitely check out if no dread is something that interests you. Finally, we have some quick fire ones to finish. We have ESB Home, Mosquito Broker and Portainer. ESB Home allows you to quickly build out your own custom IoT devices and sensors and integrate seamlessly into Home Assistant. Mosquito Broker gives you an easy way to install an MQTT broker or server and Portainer allows you to manage Docker containers on your Home Assistant through a nice web interface and this is useful if you want to learn and start using Docker more but you aren't necessarily comfortable using the command line. And there we go, that is four add-ons I think are must-haves or essential for improving the Home Assistant experience with some nice-to-haves and some of my favourite add-ons sprinkled on there at the very end. Most of these I have covered in great detail in previous videos, but some I haven't yet, so if there is any that you want me to cover in more detail or you want to know more about them, then do let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, if you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a patron on Patreon and your support allows me to keep on making these videos. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. As always, your support is very much appreciated. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed, and we'll see you in the next video.